Well, it's a video about buzzwords. So I've got a t-shirt that has a B on it. You're welcome. Hi, welcome, come on in. My name is Aoife and today I'm gonna to take you through some of the buzzwords that I have in books. If a book has anything to do with this, even one hint of it, I'm gonna put that on my shelves. I have done some kind of similar talks about this before. So there's the bookish buzzwords and boxes tag that I've taken a look at. There's also some of the tropes that I really love reading in books, the things that I love reading in books. But this is the definitive list of if you put this in your blurb or if it's a character trait or if it's about this, I am going to give you every single scent I own. First one up is twins. If your book has anything to do with twins, especially twin sisters, give me it. I have seen this done in The Vanishing Half by Brett Bennett in any of the books that had anything to do with the Mary-Kate and Ashley TV shows. I used to obsess over them when I was growing up. You've also got Double Act by Jacqueline Wilson. You have also got The Holiday Swap by Maggie Knox. Faking It by Portia McIntosh. All of these books are books that I absolutely love for other reasons like the writing or the setting or some of the character traits. But also I did love it because there were twins. <laughs> kind of similar and following on from that is a book that features sisters. It doesn't necessarily have to be twins here, just sisters of any form. I don't have sisters myself, but I always wanted to have one. And so I like to live vicariously through these book characters, the relationships that they have with their sisters, if it's a good one, if it's a tumultuous one, how they get along with each other, what they do on a daily or weekly basis. I don't know what it is. I think I just really love watching this sisterly relationship. And I do that with some of my friends in real life who have sisters as well. I ask, what do you guys like to do at the weekends? What kind of rituals do you have together? How much of each other's wardrobes do you like to steal? Some of my favorite books that involve sisters are, of course, the Brown Sister Trilogy by Talia Hibbert, where each of them is written so distinctly and dynamically that while they are separate people, you can definitely see that these girls are related to each other. You've also got the five Walsh sisters in the Walsh sister series by Marion Keys, which again, all of these women are totally different, but you can see the little similarities between them. And that's exactly the kind of sisterly relationship I would like that most of these sisters have with each other. The kind of gentle ribbing of each other and taking the piss out of each other, but you know that you're still there ride and die. There's a slightly more tumultuous relationship between Star and Dolphin in The Illustrated Mum by Jacqueline Wilson. They don't necessarily get on so well all of the time, but I still really loved seeing this kind of relationship develop between the two of them. One that you might not be surprised to learn is a buzzword for me is fake dating. It is without doubt my absolute favorite romance trope. I love seeing them discover that actually, I do really like spending time with this person. I do really see myself in a relationship with them. And the things that we've been doing that are kind of relationshipy, I really love doing that. So you can see it in Hani and Ishu's Guide to Fake Dating by Adiba Jagadar. You can also see it in If I Never Met You by Varya McFarlane. There are so many books out there with the fake dating trope. There is absolutely no reason to go and miss out on it. Another one that will not come as a surprise that I love books that are set in Ireland. I am Irish myself. I don't live there at the moment, but it's always great to have that little connection to home anytime that I'm reading a book set there. Recently, the books that I have read that are set in Ireland are again, Rachel by Marion Keys. You've got The Letter Home by Rachel English. There are so many books out there set in Ireland and not just set in Dublin, there is so many other places across the country to set a book in. Another setting in books that I absolutely love to see is cafes. I love going into a cafe, ordering coffee, maybe some cake on the side if I'm feeling generous. I'm sitting down and just escaping into my book for a couple of hours. It's a lovely way to people watch, it's a lovely way to get out of the house, but still do some of the things that you really love to do. A lot of the romances that I read can be set in these kind of cafes. So you've got The Cherry Tree Cafe by Heidi Swain, Sunshine Food at the Comfort Cafe by Debbie Johnson. You have got Snowflakes Over the Starfish Cafe by Jessica Redland. A lot of these romances are very comfy, very cozy and have cafe vibes. I absolutely love escaping into them. Another place that I love to read a book set in is at the beach. I grew up a 30 minute drive away from the beach and I loved to go there in the summer, build sandcastles, 
feel the sand between my toes, stand at the edge of the ocean and just feel the waves come towards me and then end up going home with a 99 just to close the day off. So if I want to get those beach vibes again, I will pick up my Map of You by Isabel Broom, which is set in Zakynthos, or I will pick up The Summer House in Santorini by Samantha Parks, which is set in Santorini. And it doesn't even have to be those far-flung adventures. So you've got The Secret Seaside Escape by Heidi Swain, or you have got Summer Days and Sea Breezes by Carol Matthews. And that feels a little bit more homely too, because they would have had a similar feel to the beaches that I grew up in in Ireland. Last but not least is an obsession, and a proper obsession. I have had such love for this since I was maybe like seven or eight and saw a book in my school library for the first time. If a book has anything to do with the Titanic, I will instantly get it, instantly. I have an obsession with the Titanic and I cannot even explain to you why, I just love learning about the Titanic. Some books that I have read that featured the Titanic include The Girl Who Came Home by Hazel Gaynor, include Titanic Voyage from Drum Shi by Cora Harrison, which is more of a children's book. There's also Titanic Day by Day by Simon Medhurst and Why the Titanic Was Doomed by Brian Jackson, which are more of a non-fiction look into life on the Titanic and why the sinking happened so, so enthralled by anything to do with that ship that if the book has any kind of a lick of a mention of the Titanic, I'm going to read it instantly. Those are just some of the things that will make me pick up a book, no questions asked. What do you really love to read in books? Or is there anything that you don't love seeing in books? Don't forget to like and subscribe because I have new videos up every week. Now, get on out of here.